here this morning. Welcome to worship. Special welcome to guests and any visitors we have. Um, we are so glad that you're here, and please know you're welcome back anytime. If you'd like to fill out a green card, if this is your first time here, so we know that you've come, um, you can put it in the offering plate, and we would love to have that information. Um, Pastor Jolene and Susie are gone this morning at the Synod Assembly, and so here I am. We're in worship together. It's going to be great. Um, but they are yeah, busy connecting with the Synod. So the flowers on the altar today are given by Betsy Hutchinson's family in celebration of her graduation from college with a doctor, doctorate of pharmacy degree. So congratulations to them and their family. That's great. Um, a special thank you to Anne and everybody who's helping with worship today um, and this service. Any other announcements for the good of the group from anybody? Yes. And to talk to you if they would like to sign up for a time, right? Perfect. Great. Thank you. So please consider being a donor for our blood drive here at the end of May. That would be great. Today is our last day of Sunday school, and so we um, have had a great morning with the kids, and they are going to share some special music with you all to celebrate their last day together. And so we're going to start with these beautiful young people. All right.
aren't they so great? Oh my gosh, I love them. Um, right now, we wanted to take a minute to acknowledge and appreciate some very special people that have been a part of our Sunday School program. Your teachers are pretty great, aren't they? Yeah, and we want to say thank you to the teachers. And so I'm going to read, I'm in your bulletin announcements there, a list of names. And there are a bunch of other people that have subbed and volunteered, as well as this list. But this um, group of people have taught week in and week out and loved up on these kids, and we appreciate them so much. And so if you are here, and I read your name, if you could come up front, that would be great. Yep, it's happening. So Kim Betcher, Carol Ann Dahlberg, Peter Gallatin, Olivia Gravel, Jenny Hagen, Tim Hagen, Hote Jensfold, Dots Johnson, Amy King, Irene Johnson, Go. Kelly Meyer, Jane Miller, Jordan Peterson, Amy Prussia, Christy Rearer, Vicki Strom, Rory Tangen, Carrie Went, Kayla Went, Kyra Vogley, and Kirsten Voigt. Get them all? Perfect. Thank you all so much for everything that you've done and for the time that you've invested in the kids here at Trinity and Sunday School. So if we could please give a round of applause for a thank you for them. Yes. And kids, can you say thank you on the count of three? One, two, three. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Thank you, guys. All right, kids, you can go back to your families. Thank you for your music. Let us take a moment to prepare our hearts for worship. We'll continue with the invocation. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who calls us beloved children, who gathers us into his flock, who guides us into all truth. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. In the presence of God, who sees our hearts and our minds, let us take a moment of silence to confess our sin. God, our strength, we confess that we are captive to the power of sin that dwells within us. We put ourselves first and others last think will make us happy, leaves us longing for more. Even when we want to do good, we find ourselves doing the opposite. Rescue us from death's grip on our lives and raise us up each day that we may be alive in Christ. Amen. Sisters and brothers, all have fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, we are all justified by God's grace. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, who forgives us all our sins. Amen. We will continue by singing a classic. Kids, I want to hear you on this one. Jesus Loves Me, found on page 595, if you'd like to.
please join me in the prayer of the day. Gracious God, you have chosen us as your own. By your spirit, transform us in your beloved world, that we may find our joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 1. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers and said, Friends, the scripture had to be fulfilled, which the Holy Spirit through David foretold concerning Judas, who became a guide for those who arrested Jesus. For he was numbered among us and was allotted his share in this ministry. So one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these must become a witness with us to his resurrection. So they proposed two. Joseph called Barsabbas, who was also known as Justice, and Matthias. Then they prayed and said, Lord, you know everyone's heart. Show us which one of these two you have chosen to take this place in the ministry and apostleship from which Judas turned aside to go to his own place. And they cast lots for them. And the lot fell on Matthias, and he was added to the eleven apostles. The word of the Lord. A reading from First John chapter five. If we receive human testimony, the testimony of God is greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has testified to his Son. Those who believe in the Son of God have the testimony in their hearts. Those who do not believe in the God and God have made him a liar by not believing in the testimony that God has given concerning his God. And this is the testimony. God has, God gave us eternal life and whoever does not have the son of God does not have life. I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life, the world of the Lord. In today's gospel, Jesus prays to God the Father for his disciples. A reading from the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter. Please. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, 
and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Steve. I invite any kids that are here to come on up for the children's sermon. Hey. Great to see you all again. Nice job. Good morning. You guys did a great job this morning. Thank you for singing. Did you have fun? Good. Now, how many of you guys have ever had an experience where you've had to be chosen for something? Like maybe choosing teams? What's your example? Have, what have you been chosen for? Do you know? Yeah, do you have an example? Yeah. where you're supposed to go. Yeah, there are many times where we sometimes wait to be chosen. And today, um, Kyra just read a story where, have you guys heard of the disciples before? Do you guys know who the disciples were? Who were they? Do you remember what they did? Who did they follow? Jesus. Yeah, they were a group of guys. They were called the disciples, and they followed Jesus around as he did miracles, and he taught people about God. They followed him, and one of the disciples, um, they needed to find a new one for their group, and so, this is my microphone, yeah, and so um, they had to choose someone new to be a disciple in the group because they were starting the church. They were the first people to start churches like this. And so that was a big job, and they needed some more help. And so they had to choose another person to be a part of it. And his name was Matthias. You guys say that? Matthias? Matthias. Yeah. I have a friend who was named Matthias, and he's pretty proud that he was named after the 13th disciple. <laughs> yeah. So, um... But do you guys know what? That you guys, God chooses all of you, all the way down to the end over there, to this side, we are all disciples. Do you guys ever think of that? Of you guys as disciples? I sometimes, for, yeah, forget that too, that I'm Laura, but I'm a disciple too, because we follow Jesus. And a disciple's job is to show God's love to people. And sometimes that's, we say that, that God loves you. Sometimes we do things that say that. Can you guys think of examples that would show love to others? I clean up my toys and make a mess. You clean up your toys? Yes, and then sometimes make a mess? Yes. I, I you... clean up my toys when I play them. I, I Great. So cleaning up your toys is a way to show love in the house? Great. All by, All by yourself. Good job, Nora. That's awesome. <laughs> How, what are other ways you can show love to people? Can you guys think of other ways? Yeah, Brielle. Give hugs to your mom and dad. Yeah, there are so many things that you can do because you guys are all what? What's that new word that we're talking about? D. You guys are all disciples. So sometimes as disciples we say that. So on the count of three, what I want you to yell is Jesus loves you to those guys out there. Okay? So could you yell... Great. Can you yell, Jesus loves me, as loud as you can on the count of three? Jesus One. loves me! Perfect! <laughs> One, see if you guys can do it as loud as Crane. Two, three. Jesus, Jesus loves, loves you! Me. Perfect. Look at those disciples. 
action. All right, you guys, don't forget your disciples this summer. All right, so you guys can go back to your seats. Good job. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. That's good. For um, the sermon today, we're doing something a little bit different. Um, we are going to watch a video of Bishop Larry Wilrabi preaching, actually. And he is going to preach on what we just talked about, about the Acts story that was read, about Matthias and us being disciples and a part of this mission. And I think it's very fitting. This is what they're talking about, the Synod Assembly. But Trinity itself has um, been talking a lot about ideas of where we're going forward and how we're all a part of that. And so I think it'd be great to have an outside voice um, talk to us about that and about the word of God. And so this is Bishop Larry Will Robbie, um, our bishop for the Northwest Minnesota Synod. And so um, maybe in just a couple seconds this will come up. But Dear friends in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied unto you through Jesus, our Savior. How do I figure out God's will for my life? That's a question that a lot of people ask often. How do I figure out God's will for my life, my family, my church? Where is God taking us, and how will we best become aligned with God's direction. Questions like these point us to the faith practice of discernment, imagining the contours of God's promised future and how that future affects the ways that God is calling us to step out right now. When you think about discerning God's will, where does that happen best for you and for your congregation? Well, you know, sometimes discernment happens in a retreat setting with balloons bouncing around the room, post-it notes plastered all over a wall, sheets of butcher paper with chicken scratch notes from brainstorming exercises as leaders of the church try to puzzle out goals and how to pursue them. Discernment can also take place in a time of contemplation, in silence, in darkness pierced only by one candle, in centering ourselves, in praying, new insights can emerge. Discernment sometimes happens in meetings of chosen church leaders who've been reading good books, studying demographic trends, interviewing church members, conversing with neighbors, trying to distill the finest honey from all that pollen. And then discernment sometimes happens in the midst of chaos. Discernment can bubble up in clutch moments when a crisis suddenly emerges and action must be taken. Even in times of chaos, when everyone's asking, what do we do now, for heaven's sake? Discernment can happen, albeit by the seat of our pants. This peculiar narrative from Acts chapter 1 was a discernment moment. The first time members of what would become the first church engaged in communal discernment together. And the 11 apostles seem to have employed various pathways to discernment in the midst of a crisis with a wing and a prayer in the confidence that God can and will work through just about any means. This story truly is a discernment story. It has a shape that starts to sound familiar as we listen to the story with care. First, there is an elephant in the room. The elephant being the absence of one of the 12 disciples. One of them had disappeared, not by accident, but by treachery, betrayal, and a gruesome death that is 
described here in Acts 1 with more graphic detail than most of us want to hear. The reason why Judas' death posed a problem to the remaining 11 disciples is that Jesus had intentionally chosen 12, not 11, not 13, but 12 disciples to symbolize the 12 tribes of Israel, the whole people of God whom Jesus now was reconstituting through his self-emptying life, his saving death, and his most surprising resurrection. The defection of one of the twelve, Judas Iscariot, the betrayer, diminished the potency of the symbol of the twelve constituting the new Israel, the vanguard of the whole people of God. So what should be done about that? Discernment of God's will for people and faith communities begins often with the reality of elephants in the room, uncomfortable truths that aren't being talked about openly and honestly. So I ask you, dear friends, what elephants lurk in the shadows of your church building? What uncomfortable truths do you tend to dance around? What hard realities tempt you to look away and whistle in the dark, hoping, hoping that no one will notice? Back to our text. Aware of the elephant in the room here in Acts 1, the second thing that happens is that someone breaks the silence. A pastor friend likes to say, when you realize there's an elephant in the room, please introduce it to everyone else. In this story, it is Peter who names the elephant in the room, and that is noteworthy for two reasons. First, it's the first time after Jesus' ascension that one of his followers just stands up and starts exercising servant leadership in the emerging church. And second, it's the first time here in Acts that Jesus' followers start to look forward and not backward. Exercising servant leadership isn't for sissies. When you're in a discussion at church, it takes gumption to speak up and even more guts to join a leadership team, not to mention to serve as convener or chair for that group. But the church of Jesus Christ needs such brave, willing, imaginative servant leaders, perhaps now more than ever. So Peter stepped out and invited the early church to dance with the risen Lord in his ongoing mission of reclaiming the whole creation, starting with the cross and the empty tomb, moving not backward but forward into God's promised future in Christ. So I ask you, Dear friends, how does your faith community form and call forth servant leaders? How do you support the leaders that you already have? What obstacles are sometimes put in the way of such leadership? And which direction is your church facing, backward or forward? Back to our story in Acts 1. There's an elephant in this room filled with about 120 followers of Jesus. Peter gets up the gumption to name this elephant and propose that they do something. And in so doing, Peter points the fledgling church not backward, but forward. Judas Iscariot's gory death had diminished the apostolic ranks by one. Somehow that must be addressed so that when the Holy Spirit falls upon them, they are poised, ready to move out into the world at full strength. Then the third thing happens here. And the third thing is that the disciples together generate possibilities for a successor to Judas. They had no governing documents to rely on, no workshop on leadership replacement they could all attend, no apostolic headhunter they could hire to conduct a nationwide search. Instead, the 11 disciples relied on their sanctified common sense, focusing on just one criterion 
for replacing the 12th disciple. One of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, one of these must become with us a witness to his resurrection. Thus was convened the first church nominating committee in the history of Christendom. The group soon surfaces two candidates for the open seat in the apostolic circle, Joseph, who had a couple of other names, and Matthias. So I ask you, dear friends, how does your congregation invest imagination in generating possibilities for serving God's mission in this time, this place? Do you give yourselves the gifts of time and prayer and reflection on those things that matter the most? Back to our text. Fourth, and finally, the disciples acted. There's no record of them conducting a Minnesota Statute 604.2 background check on Joseph or Matthias. The 11 didn't declare 40 days of of fasting, they didn't waste any time second-guessing themselves. Instead, they decided by praying and casting lots. St. Augustine, who was a bishop in the 4th century church in northern Africa, once said, pray as if everything depends upon prayer and work as if everything depends upon work. The 11 disciples seemingly anticipated Augustine's approach, putting themselves in God's hand through prayer and then doing the work of casting lots, electing a successor. The result was that Matthias was chosen to assume the possession of 12th apostle, restoring the missionary strike force to full strength. And once Matthias was elected, he was never heard from again, at least not in the pages of the Holy Scriptures. It's as if Matthias' only job was to be there, to be chosen, to transform those 11 sorry survivors of Good Friday into the 12 missionary witnesses to the resurrection. That was enough. If that seems a little anticlimactic to you, just remember that the book of Acts itself concludes its 28 chapters in sort of an inconclusive manner. As books go, Acts is something of a cliffhanger. And I think that that is exactly what the Holy Spirit intended. Some books aren't intended to tie up all the loose ends. God is still writing the ending to the book of Acts through the likes of you and me, latter-day successors to the apostles whom God is still calling and sending forth as witnesses to the resurrection, people who point unceasingly toward God's promised future in Jesus Christ. As God crafts the conclusion to God's great story, you and I take our places, we play our parts in ways that might end up being as obscure as the rest of the story of St. Matthias, the blessed replacement. And that's okay. It is enough, more than enough, simply to be swept up into this story of how God is making all things new in Jesus Christ. It is enough that we get to repeat and to live the greatest lines in our episode of God's mission imaginable. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. All right. Thank you, Bishop Larry. We will continue with the song, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, number 857. We're going to sing it twice. Yes.
please stand as we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please take some time to share that peace with one another. We will now collect our morning's offering. We sing sanctuary. Please join us in prayer. As God's people called to love one another, let us pray for the needs of the church, the body of Christ, and all the world. We thank you, God, for all of our Sunday school helpers and teachers who helped us learn more about you this year. We thank you for their gifts and love of kids. Lord, in your mercy, Be with all of you, with all the youth and families as the school year comes to an end. Bless them this summer as they learn new ways and continue to grow. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, help us to have the courage to live as your disciples and to listen for your call in our lives. Guide us as we live out your mission of love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift. We lift our voices and ask that you continue to pour out your love and heal, healing hand on our brothers and sisters in Nepal. Give them hope in this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For the lonely and those who provide companionship, for the bereaved and those who provide comfort, for the sick and those who provide healing, we especially pray for Denise, Colleen, Ron, Michaela, Beth, Deb, and Diane. May they find comfort and strength in you. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, have
May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We will end our service by singing This Little Light of Mine, and if any kids would like to come up front and play some instruments, you are more than welcome. people called to grow in faith. All right. <laughs>